Well, hello everyone, it's me, Old Max, so greeting you from in real life again to talk about how things fall apart all the time. They tend to do that, don't they? That's something I've been thinking a lot since I've started this channel, really, is just time and how things change over periods and periods and periods, just how different things are when you actually go and look back at them. I've had a pretty tumultuous last month or so in my personal life. It's been something, it's felt like a common theme of the past year or so is that we're having a lot of these rocky periods, it seems. Uh, on a personal note, I've had like, I've been reflecting on it, I've, I've lost like three of the closest people to me in my life in just over a year. Just relationships fizzling out, things not going correctly. And it's made me realize, I was thinking like myself back a year ago, myself back two years ago, three years ago, I think. Did I think I'd end up here? I had no idea I'd be where I am right now. I think about where my relationships are in my personal life now. If I compare it to then, I'm just like, everything is so, so different. And I'm more and more learning that's just life. <laughs> that's like the core to life is that things will just inevitably change. And you have to learn to roll with it. And not just roll with it. You have to learn to embrace it fully. Because I think that's where life kind of matters. And it's most important. It's what I've coined inflection points is when you go through these horrible times. You can either have the choice of letting them overwhelm you. You can wallow in self-pity about why they happen. Reminisce on the past and let them break you down. Or conversely, you can use them to shape you. Just use them to make you grow into a better person become who you want to be and that's what I usually opt in for at these <laughs> pivotal moments in time but yeah I was kind of thinking of it in terms of like you never really know if these things are good or bad in the moment they appear overwhelmingly bad you told my ass last year in February when I got broke up broken up with that this would be a good experience I'd been like haha I'm gonna go cry on this bed for fucking 10 days straight and I wouldn't have believed you but you really just don't know. It reminds me, I think it's a Buddhist passage. It's in an old Sneeko video before he went clinically insane on the red pill. Uh, what was it? It's, 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 it was this, I think it's a, from a Buddhist book his mum showed him. It's like something about Buddhist philosophy. It's this story of a guy who, I think he, he was playing, I don't know what it is, maybe he was going for a walk or something. He's having a great day. And then out of nowhere, he stumbles on a rock and his, he breaks his leg. He shatters his leg. Awful. Off to hospital. Doctors are saying, you're not going to walk on that shit for three months. You're not... Like, what are you going to do? You know, you're bedridden. You're, this is horrible. It, you would interpret that as horrible. But as the passage goes, the next day, the army comes around drafting soldiers for the war because they're going to war with someone. And, well, he can't walk, so he's not going to be drafted. So he's been dodged from this horrible experience. So he might have had one horrible experience, but in turn, it's led him to dodge that. And, hey, who knows? Maybe with his broken leg, he picks up riding. He starts riding every day because he can't walk and he gets really good at riding. And then so on and so on, he becomes a successful rider. And you just you just don't know in the moment. A decision of a leg breaking is pretty extreme. But a decision like something like a relationship failing, a family member passing away, all these things appear absolutely horrible in the moment. And even now, looking back on things like that, they still are horrible things that happen to you, but they're necessary. And I think they're usually the most important points in your life where things start to turn around is at these, these inflection points. I've always called them that, inflection points, where things get better from them. Uh, I, I'm more and more realizing in life, really, it is just this balance, this natural roller coaster. You have your peaks followed by lows, and for those who appreciate the highs, of course, you need the lows to appreciate the lows. Well, not appreciate the lows, but suffering through the lows gives you an appreciation for the highs, and you have to keep that in mind whilst you're going through it. It's, it's made me more think about things bigger. I've really started subscribing more to like karma as a philosophy. I'm more of the belief that like what you're putting into the world, you kind of get back out of it. Maybe it's a bit spiritual, but like, I was thinking of terms of being honesty. I'm very honesty pilled lately. I'm being very truthful uh, with people. And it made me think of like how even telling like small lies, doing the small bad, you kind of like make a web of small lies, right? They're nothing major. They kind of just make the immediate moment easier. When you're explaining something to someone, you don't want to bring up something awkward. So you just kind of brush past with a little lie, a little lie there. And before you know it, you have this like web, absolute web, this landmines full of small lies that you're trying to navigate through and... It just takes one of them to explode in your face, to completely unravel things. And that's how I kind of view karma through like, if, you, if you're putting negativity in the world, you're lying, you're not being just honest, it's going to blow up in your face. And conversely, I think the opposite is true. For everyone you're honest with, for everyone you do good for, for everyone you act in service of, I feel like the universe takes note. Maybe not literally, I don't know if there's some cosmic energy out there, man, but I feel like on some level, you'll be rewarded or you'll be, you know, put in place you get a reality check if you string a web of lies through life then i've just been thinking about in terms of relationships in terms of change and just everything really i've had a lot to a lot of thinking about lately i've realized this one specifically i feel like i, I want to talk straight to myself from three years ago 
uh, when I got straight out of high school, I really wish I could talk to him and be like, expect this, this will happen. Be prepared for it. I just wish I could sit down with a slightly fatter version of me with no life skills really, who didn't know what he wants to do, who was very lost and confused. Wasn't a fantastic person, wasn't a horrible person either though. I wish I could just sit him down and give him this talk of like, you're going to have some shit happen, bro. It's going to be very important for you, but I wish I could just have more of a prep talk with him to, you know, roll with the punches. I don't know. That's what I think this is right now. So maybe if you're younger, 18, I don't know, maybe even younger than that. I feel like, I feel like you can kind of brush to the side what I'm saying now, but I feel like your life's going to get spun on its head so hard and you'll have no idea. The rug will be completely fucking pulled from under you. You'll have no idea how to react. And you learn a lot in those moments. You learn a fucking lot in those moments. And I've had a lot of those moments in the past year, I've felt like. But with all those negative things, there's also been all the positive things, which is what I'm saying. There's this balance. Yin and yang, karma, you know? I don't know. I feel like it all kind of links into each other. But yeah, it's it's a lot. Life really is a lot. It has a lot going on. So I encourage in moments of bad, that's not a great way of putting it, in those weaker moments where you don't really know what's happening, the rug's been pulled from beneath you, a family member passes, a relationship fizzles out, something horrible happens, you break a leg or something like that. In those moments, you need to be introspective, think through things, take a little bit of time, not too much though, to just process things. But then you need to flip it. You can't, you can't just sit with these things unless you want to wallow in self-pity and be a victim and hate yourself for your life, which I don't think is the most productive thing you want to do. But yeah, I just, I don't know. Your life's going to change a lot. Life's going to fuck you up. You don't know when. Everything will be normal. Everything will be going fine. And it just takes one, one small thing for everything. It just, it just sets, it's the fucking, it's the, it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. It's fucking, it opens the floodgates and just from one thing. It's like I was about with the one small lie. One small thing will happen and everything, absolutely everything unravels from there. And you'll have no idea when it's coming. Will you? Will you? <laughs> Kidding. I don't know, just like, I don't know. Maybe your life will be different to mine. It definitely is different to mine, isn't it? But I just know you're going to get thrown. You're going to get thrown in the deep end. This is why I've been really kind of subscribing more to more like a stoic philosophy thing. Uh, more like a stoic philosophy these days. There's Actually, let me get the book. And I'm back. Here we are. Meditations. This is the one book I have a lot of notes in. I don't know if I have the specifics passage, but I remember one specific passage from it, which talks about... It's, it's a bunch of... Look, I can maybe show you some of the pages in it, right? It's a very interesting book because... If you don't know Marcus Aurelius, he was with the Emperor of Rome however long ago, very long time ago. And he actually never meant for this book to be published. It was his personal diary, basically, where he wrote a lot of introspective thoughts and things in it. So it's a really interesting book because it's a bunch of his passages from his diary um, that were never meant to be published, which makes them really authentic and kind of like raw. Because if you're not writing for someone, you're just writing for yourself. And I think that brings a really interesting complexity to like a book, but I digress. Um, you can kind of see, I'm trying to get a good example of a page here. Here you go. You can see this kind of like, let me, it's like a bunch of small passages, right? And I remember one of those passages, specific, I don't know where it's going to be, specifically in the book. It was about a rock. It's about being a rock in the shoreline. And there's waves coming. And you're going to be this big old rock that just sits there. It doesn't matter how many big waves come splashing at you. It doesn't matter what tries to turn you over. You are a rock. And you are unwavered, you're unmoved, and you will sit there and you'll you take it. You have to take it. That's how I kind of look at myself through life. You have all these ups and downs that are just going to come fucking out of nowhere, actually out of nowhere. Everything can flip fucking overnight. And you'll have those moments. And you just have to be a rock, enduring the waves. And the waves shape you. They probably erode you a bit. In other ways, they build strength. You know, they, they're important for life and you need them. They're, I, like this, I was talking about the story. You don't know if they're good or bad. They're usually the most important experiences of your life. They teach you a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I've just been thinking about it a lot again because life's fucking thrown its curveballs as it has. I kind of hope it slows down a bit. Let me just make stupid videos about playing Spy for 100 days with my 42,000 word script. <laughs> so let me do that all day, please. But no, I'm in an interesting, interesting spot right now. I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm doing well, but I've been thinking a lot. I've been thinking a lot about a lot of things for like a year since I've started this channel. And I'm glad I have it. I'm glad I get to talk to you directly. This is basically like what I write in my journal, basically just in front of a camera or mic. So I'm happy I have some place to externalize it and hopefully it can bring some value to you. But if I had to summarize, life will fuck you over so hard in the next year. Maybe tomorrow, next week, next month, whenever it is, you are going to get 
royally fucked over by life. And when that happens, it'll be bad. Don't push off grieving or like struggling through it. Don't push any of that off. But the only thing I'd tell you is I want to plant that little seed in the back of your head. It's like, this sucks right now. But one, it's pivotal. And two, it's not forever. And usually these are the things, these are the things that set up bigger moments in the rest of your life. They're important learning experiences. You learn a lot from them and you need them to move on into better things. So just try and remember that in those times of struggle. It's what I just think I keep telling myself every fucking day at this rate. <laughs> There's so much going on, but we get through it. We learn, we grow. And ultimately we're happy. Are we not? I hope we are. As for my hundred days of progress so far, this week was a bit slow. I've been adjusting to some new things. My routine wasn't as good, but tomorrow on Monday, I'm going to give it a full full reset. I was mostly on my routine, but had some distractions here and there that got in the way. Um, but no, this week, head's going to be screwed on, locked on. I'm working on my big 100 Days of Spy video, which is now at 42,000 words. It's going to be a three-hour video, by the way. I'm pouring my heart and soul into this shit. And if it gets demonetized, I don't care, because I'm that fucking rock in the ocean with the waves crashing at me, bitch. 700 hours of work on a project just to make no money off it and have it not get views in the algorithm <laughs> I don't care I, my livelihood doesn't depend on it I'm fucking stoic about it bitch I'm half joking because actually it'd suck but like just move on what did I say on my video a few weeks ago next play always move on to the next play but no I've been doing well with my routine there's just been some distractions around um, not even bad distractions it's more it's been like shit's been happening you know it's fine. Life gets in the way of your routine sometimes. Important things happen that you just got to give time to because you don't have to be fully strict with the routine all the time, especially if there's, there's things happening. So yeah, I'm not angry at myself at all. I know I'm going to go harder into it next week um, and keep keep fucking doing it. Keep chipping away at these goals that we all should have and be striving towards. That's basically what I've got to say. So I'm going to leave it there. That's all from me. I hope you're doing well and farewell, Elite Level Gamer.